Hello and welcome back to the MineTrek.net game server. This will be an update for the Enterprise D, episode 41. I did record this episode earlier and unfortunately I had a uh, Windows issue. Windows Explorer stopped working when I right clicked on an image in one of my folders and it crashed the, uh, crashed the system. And unfortunately uh, this video, the previous video rather, uh, was in the process of uploading and it it I don't know what happened. It corrupted the audio file in the folder, and also the uh, the audio for the upload was so bad that uh, YouTube just blanked it all out. So, anyways, I'm re-recording the episode. I had to disengage or disengage, deactivate, disenable. Excuse, that's the word I'm looking for. Disable all my shell extensions, third-party shell extensions, in order to you know sort of try and get some right click functionality back. Again, this is a uh, parasite issue um, caused by Windows 10. I'm not sure uh, how to reconcile it. Uh, I, I have absolutely zero confidence in my system now because it just seems like one issue after another, after another, after another keeps creeping in and causing me problems uh, related to the Windows 10 installation. Don't get me wrong, I like Windows 10, but uh, it it's it's getting to the point now where I'm about ready to uh, go back to Windows 7 Pro and, you know, just say the hell with it. Of course, I can't really do that because all my, every one of my files, all my, all my files, everything are associated with Windows 10 now. So to roll it back, I would definitely need uh, tech support from Windows or Microsoft itself in order to fix all the parent permissions and everything else. But then again, that will cause a whole bunch of host issues and other issues that will just be ongoing for from now on so it would be a complete wipe of all my data everything all across all my drives everything and I just dread that so it's reinstall Windows 10 and hope for the best hopefully by dropping the shell extensions uh, I can fix that but on uh, dropping the shell extensions has also caused me a bunch of other issues like now when I look at my folders I don't see images I just see blank sheets and stuff uh, I'm getting a bit of a stutter going on there. Right now it's just Guardian Shadow and myself that are on the server. I think M's on, but she's AFK at the moment. So, not sure what's causing it. Uh, it sometimes the server runs really smooth for me, other times it doesn't run smooth. and I, It's kind of, a, kind of one of those things. Anywho, what I've been doing is I've been working on deck 8 and 9. I worked with M a little bit on deck M8 here. She's working over there in the aft section over by the impulse engines. And I've been working, trying to get deck uh, 8 prepped. And in order to finish um, out deck 8, I had to bring up deck 9 in order to finish up the two deck, or the two tall deck areas. Like here's a uh, botanical garden. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to go like one of them be like a, a Japanese style garden in the center here and then two botanical gardens off to the side or like botanical garden in the center and Japanese garden on one side and or some other type of garden on the other like a tropical I don't know alien rainforest on this side I just threw up these walls to sort of denote that the room is definitely different and the sky um, I used the sky block so when you come in the room you look up it looks like you're looking out into space that could change but you never know it might not it, it, it could well stay the same I've uh, extended a corridor through here that was not here before uh, in preparation for what Cass was doing. Cass was working in this area here and he gave me this big nice room here that I can use. So I needed to have access to it and I'll show you here real quick what Cass was working on. I'm also going to get rid of this bathroom and extend this corridor up to this uh, Jeffrey's er, turbo lift as well. This looks all funky and yeah it's because of the changes that we made on the grotto as well as changes made for for including the theater. Anywho, this is the uh, lecture hall for students. Yes, there are students on the Enterprise D. We all know that. Five-year mission, a bunch of kids running around. Anyway, so they have these lecture halls. Of course, I'm sure at some point if it ever needed to be, they could be repurped to like strategic command or something. Anyways, there are two of them. There's that one and I don't think Cass has got the other one done yet, so we won't probably hasn't gotten it done yet. This is stellar, part of stellar cartography right here. Here's the egg itself and then all the stuff around it will be support systems for stellar cartography like research labs and things like that related to stellar cartography because all of its other stuff is up here for all the 
maintenance stuff for stellar cartography and tie-ins to sensors, sensor boosters, data processors, image resoluters, or whatever you want to call them. They're all right here. You can see this classroom here hasn't been done yet. Cass will probably get to it when he has time, hopefully sooner or later. Anyways, uh, whoops, keep getting that down frame, frame stutter. As far as I know, I have nothing running in the background, so I shouldn't be getting any frame stutter from my end. But then again, yeah, I'm probably going to have to rebuild my system, and I'm just not just not looking forward to it. ML stands for medical lab, medical lab, medical lab, all the way through here. Then SL is science labs, and then EL is engineering labs. And I believe there's a couple of those back there. These areas are empty. Uh, right now, we, we will put all the devices and stuff in these before we mirror it because, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Uh, that's a fusion reactor. There are two of them in there. That's a deuterium tank. It's a mad style deuterium tank. Storage locker. The reason why I had to drop deck 8 again, as I mentioned, is because I need to work on the, the shared sections of deck 8 and 9 in order to make sure that they're aligned correctly, i.e., these over here are the top of hollow suites so I need to make sure that these correspond to the hollow suites below and that the hollow because you're doing double walls that everything you know lines up correctly and that we don't end up having a mismatch M wanted to include a large open deuterium tank instead of smaller uh, mad style tanks which would have been put into this area so she recommended that we go ahead and tear out tear out all the uh, sections that were in here which you really didn't serve much of a purpose other than I think they were bunk housing and stuff like that so yeah we could lose those no problems because we're getting a lot of other crew quarters in other areas so hopefully by the time we're done there'll be enough crew quarters to accommodate the thousand crew plus uh, four to four to five thousand other people um, they might have to pair up who knows but anyway so I'm building this big tank here and as you can see it's all being outlined and everything else M extended the impulse engines considerably. I had them really short impulse engines, and she, I think, extended them by a couple of lengths. So we had to rework this section through here. And we're also working on Deck 9, uh, doing a revamp of Deck 9. That's what you see here. It looks like uh, part of what I did got cut out for some reason, probably, and working on this section here. No big deal, can be redone. Anyways, you can see that she's included quite a bit of work here on Deck 9 for the impulse bay looking good looking good I ran into some magenta there and what we're talking about here is to try do like a hybrid between the Steinbach plans our version of the plans and uh, derp 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 uh, at Wi-Fi fire plants so what happens is you have a power line coming off of the impulse engines down through a angled section here and I'll get to all this stuff here in a second and it basically we want to be able to link the impulse engines to each other through the saucer as well as being able to power into the main trunk line so as you can see the round circle map above me there it shows it um, and then it goes forward here up into the trunk line and ties in to the trunk line which uh, of course ties in back to the secondary hall now here's an important thing now this area here I labeled as batteries but I might even drop a fusion a couple of fusion generators in here I don't know it's up to Emma she wants to do but we can't go backwards because we have this phaser strip right here. So that's why the trunk lines are the way they are. They're actually below us and up above us into the secondary hall. All of this area here will be, as I said before, all the stuff will be added in and everything else. Um, this is just like a power feed from... I don't know if this is still going to be valid or not. I have to I have to go back and look at deck 7 and then see how it works. I definitely would go it definitely probably does go up into deck 7. So this will probably be valid this way, but down here and stuff, I don't know if it'll still be valid. I will probably have to still route it some way through here. Um, or it can just go forward and like zigzag through here. I don't know yet. I have to figure out how to route this. It might just actually get routed from up in here someplace, yeah, I think probably from over there, then down into this room. But if I decide to route it down here along on Deck 9, I'll rework this area so there's a conduit path through here into this room and so forth. I really don't know how I'm going to do that. I might just close that off. Don't know yet. This is a locking mechanism. And I did some research and um, talked to a couple of people, and yeah, the locking mechanisms... Uh, between the two halls also transfer power and everything else all the conduits and stuff go through those so that's why uh, those are the way they are because when they retract them they disengage all the drive systems all the supplement power systems the deuterium exchangers um, the power exchangers all that 
are basically pumped or handled through uh, surface contact and magnetic contacts and coupling contacts with these things. So um, all the landing struts have that. So it's uh, or landing struts, all the docking struts are basically connections between the hull, not just locking struts, but also connections. So before I knew that, and I'm sure Imp probably um, just figured it, figured that out as well a while back, and we just decided, eh, screw it, we're too far along to worry about it now. We can still implement tie-ins to them, so yeah, we can still do that. But we also wanted solid connections, you know, hard point connections, umbilical connections, and that's what this is. This is one of the upper umbilical connections directly off of main engineering here and it punches into the secondary hull and then feeds back to the trunk line or the spinal conduit on the uh, s in the secondary hull. And this thing's pretty massive. I mean, it's uh, it's got a ram system, so it feeds off. Basically, this extends, think of aliens, you know, this is the mouth part. And they interlock with those couplers there and then pull back. When they pull back, this comes down and seals the hull. And same thing on the bottom side, it, it comes up and seals the secondary hull. It's, you know, it's a good system, so we're hoping to keep that, as well as maybe, it uh, depends on how we want to go, also having tie-ins with, of course, these these locking mechanisms here. If this is approved, all this stuff will get dropped down, and it'll become part of the permanent uh, Deck 9 layout. Now, there are hollow suites below us here, and since I'm running this right here through here, we have to, sp it's splitting up the, the, there's like two hollow suites, maybe three hollow suites through here. Um, so, or if there's not, there will be. It'll be broken up into three hollow suites, maybe four hollow suites. I don't know yet. But what'll happen is this area here will be one hollow suite, and then this will share. The hollow suite will share right down the center of this with this hollow suite, and then I'll break up this room to make it equal to that, that size of that room. And this will be another hollow suite system, and then either it'll be another system here for another hollow suite. Uh, for like a bigger hollow suite, or this room will be partly converted into something like storage or additional uh, equipment, you know, even a sensor node or transformer, whatever, uh, shield node, uh, stabilizers, who knows, whatever. Um, this, I believe, is, yeah, this is part of the the actual hollow suite system between deck 8, 7 and 8, and 9, and I guess 10, because I guess it goes all the way down to deck 10, so these are pretty massive hollow suites. So I assume these are probably massive hollow suites as well, but they can be broken into thirds. So there'll probably be three hollow suites through there, this one, this one, and three more over there. Ship's going to have plenty of hollow suites, that's for darn sure. Suppose up here. Now, uh, with deck eight, uh, this is part of the shield generator, and this is a shield node, a heavy-duty shield node, heavy booster. So if the shields take a hit and they start to drain, these things kick in and reinforce the shields. Um, there are smaller versions of these that help stabilize the shields and things like that. So these are science labs with their own independent research rooms. Kind of neat, I like how it looks. These are particle accelerators. There are four of them in the ship uh, for different reasons. You know, particle physics labs and things like that. So let's go take a look at those real quick. I'll show you what it looks like. Um, I think it looks okay. I'm not saying it's the greatest looking thing, but I think it looks okay. Got a nice lab in here, and then you step in, and you got your chamber in here, and then you got your labs over here, and then another one here, and of course the fourth one over here. But yeah, sort of a kind of a sciencey particle lab sort of room, kind of a thing. Yeah, do you don't want to be in here when that thing's going off? You might end up glowing. Don't want to glow. That'd be bad. That would be real bad. So yeah. Been getting a lot of requests for ship downloads. And it's our policy on the server not to provide uh, downloads of our work uh, simply because, uh, you know, they're not done. And we don't want to share stuff with people that haven't contributed with the builds. And, uh, you know, they're not done. And we just don't, you know, we don't, don't feel comfortable giving out half-built stuff and then somebody going along and trying to finish it and screwing it up. And then you end up having problems with people saying it's all their work and you know it just it, we've had that issue in the past and we want we so we adopted a policy to avoid that we simply don't share our work with non-contributors and non-contributors mean uh, people that come on the server and don't contribute to the builds or to the server or any of that stuff so just keep that in mind um, also I mirrored the deck 8 cobra head because the cobra head has two parts on it. It has a set side for this and then it has a different setup on this side. So I had to mirror it 
um, and then drop the new part down into it. And since the Cobra head's not that large on deck 8, I just figured to go ahead and finish it all as one piece. It's not completely finished, it's still missing some of the system stuff. And I've been working in this area here because I found a huge mistake um, earlier this morning when I was working on that Cobra head. And I, 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 I don't know how it happened, but uh, when at some point this side here got mirrored over to this side and I actually had an entire, I'll show you here in a second, an entire section of the ship here. It had an extra orange layer and an extra stone layer in it and then an air, uh, a layer of air. And when I pulled it out for the purpose of mirroring up there, I found it and it took me about an hour and a half to um, resolve those issues. And I tell you, it was, it was a good find. I still don't know how that happened because I was extra careful. I think what happened is somebody did some changes, mirrored it without realizing that it affected the area down here and you know I don't know what the deal was but yeah it, it should not have happened I'm usually exceptionally careful about that kind of stuff because I need to be and that came to me if I had done something like that I would have known it right off the bat that I'd done it um, especially when I was breaking the ship up into layers but when I found it um, afterwards I'm pretty sure I didn't do it so it took me a while to clean it and I was pretty perplexed and pissed about it so but it's gotten leaned anyways as you can see through here, I may have recorded some footage earlier that involved this, so that may actually come in a later video, or not. So, But I'll show you here real quick here as we do a tour around this. It's got a nice feel to it. Uh, you'll see some rooms and stuff through here. These are batteries. They are connected to the power system on the bottom, not on the top, just FYI. There's a access point in here for... This is the sh uh, escape pods. All the escape pod components and recharging and all those stuff you'll go in there and um, hmm, do I wanna yeah I'm gonna go ahead and fill that I'll probably do it on the other side as well but uh, yeah the escape cars go in here and uh, hmm this is odd I guess I'll have to mirror this one over as well I um, as you can see I'll show you here real quick well I, before I lose my train of thought we come over here you can see how those hatches are in. I'll have to mirror those to over here as well. Uh, I thought they were already in, but they're not, so I'll go ahead and do that. That's a good find, too. That's a good catch. Anyways, come back through here, and this is a Jeffrey's tube. It'll go all the way back through here into this area here, which is where all the part of the locking mechanism stuff is. But if you go into the ship, you see they go down a couple of more decks. So there'll be like a bunch of stuff related to the locking mechanisms up through here. On the old D, this is just a big empty room. So we're going to take advantage of the big empty room by filling it with stuff. Some more batteries, because why not? And we'll come back through this way. Actually, no, we'll go out up here, and then we'll be in the front of the Cobra head. Uh, choo -choo -choo. There we go. There's the door. More batteries. And uh, we'll go around the front here. These are basically undesignated rooms as of yet. Uh, they're labeled, but I don't know exactly what. This is like an ODN junction. I went ahead and pushed it into the Jeffries tube so that you can go from one into the other, like so thought that was a good touch and uh, this will be a stairwell down into this section whatever this section ends up being um, subject to change subject to change another little OD injunction I'm going to steal something I saw on killer waffle ship for these I thought that was pretty clever so I'm stealing another one of killers ideas I was over there helping him he's working on an Excelsior build and I went over there and he didn't have any of his turbo lifts connecting to each other they were just sort of non-existent and the ones that were existent were just straight up and down turbo lifts with no benefit of being branched off or connecting or interconnecting so I went through and I, I set up uh, decks two through five I think with turbo lifts and Shadow was over helping me get stuff organized so hopefully uh, Killer will like what we did and be able to expand upon it from there didn't change much of what he did have in just routed turbo lifts and had to make some adjustments on some existing stuff so hopefully he likes that um, I will show you that but it's uh, uh, it looks like crap right now. I'll wait till Killer gets on there and cleans a bit of it up, then we can showcase it. So that's provided he still wants to work on it. Hopefully he does, because it's, he's off to a good start. Just needs to, just needs to, you know, roll up his sleeves a little bit. Anyways, on this side of the of the Cobra head, we have medical complex. We have like a op operation room, um, inspection room, uh, whatever you want to call it. The medical ward here bathroom, medical supply storage here. This would be the patient ward. This here would be hmm, examination and or OR. 
and or O R. And then on here we have a turbo lift. Now I honestly do not know how I'm going to resolve this issue. This turbo lift may or may not actually go down into the secondary hull. I won't know that until I start working on the secondary hull. Ugh. Fix that. That means I gotta go fix it in like everywhere else. Uh, here's security, complete with security bunks and rooms. It still needs a little bit of fleshing, although probably could be a little desk right here where somebody sits here. Hello. And when you watch the show, this is the security room that, that I think that they use a lot as a primary holding bay. Uh, that's my that's my logic. It looks like it, and I'm sticking to it. You know, like in season one, the Klingons got captured. They threw them in here and stuff like that. So that's my logic. That's why it looks like that. I think it's it's a good fit for it. Again, this is the stairwell up into deck seven, and of course, this is also a uh, airlock. Keep that in mind come around here, um, bathroom, big open kind of book area, let's read a book, a uh, small security storage area, probably just be like supplies and stuff, and a bathroom, and then we have a couple of little, uh, like, this isn't labeled, but what it is, is there's a, uh, like a computer, you know, uh, terminal access right here, so you come in and access a computer terminal. Uh, this room here isn't labeled, uh, it was labeled, but because of changes, because of evolving designs, sometimes when the audit is done, the first audit is done, the rooms will change as the design evolves and is adapted and so forth. So the signs end up getting dropped. You know, it's nothing intentional, it's just things like that happen. I can tell you that I think this one over here was auxiliary EMG life support systems. This again, that's you know just auxiliary life support for this deck. Uh, life support. This will probably be main life support then. That'll be auxiliary life support. So, yeah. Anywho, we'll come into here and I'll show you some of the work that I did. Uh, I can, here's the captain's ready room. I went to Gosh darn it. I know I, I did this. Ugh. Always having to fix my own work. Why? Because I suck at remembering that things get changed. Alright. Sorry about that. Uh, some some chat came up for the admins and uh, I kept recording and oops uh, some private chat was going on there so I went ahead and turned chat off I'll probably have chat off from now on when I'm recording just to be on the safe side um, anywho as I was saying I uh, went ahead and put a gosh darn it I just fixed that fix stay fixed anyways um, yeah this here is the captain's ready room and uh, we wanted access to the Jeffrey's tube from the main bridge so basically you go into the captain's ready room go into the go into the the turbo lift, turbo lift <laughs> Jeffrey's tube here and then you can go up the ladder here and then I hollowed all the crap that was in here out that way there uh, we had room up here um, I don't know how I'm gonna wall it yet uh, probably something figure something out when we do it and I added like another ladder down into that Jeffrey's tube and then uh, come along here and did the same thing here this is the view screen so I covered it up it's ugly and down through here excuse me Anywho, uh, this is the inner locks. That looks like a part of a corridor. It's not. It's actually a hatch. Oops. Uh, that's Cass. Whoops. See if I can type here. Uh, hmm. Type. Hey, what? No. Oh, let's try this. No. Eh, screw it. Hello, and I'm back. Uh, Cass popped in to say hi, and I was fumbling around with the chat trying to tell him, uh, hey, what's up? Uh, recording, but, um, yeah. Uh, he helped me out. He was. I'm not sure how I'm going to reconcile this right here. Uh, it may or may not go down to the secondary hall. I really don't know until I really start uh, mirroring off decks and seeing how I'm going to resolve that. Let's take a spin over here real quick. Uh, here's the medical complex. Uh, this is the, I guess, the OR and the uh, uh, examination room. Doctor's office. A little bit of, like a little, put a couple of chairs here to sit and relax. Uh, the patient ward, bathroom, the medical storage over here. Uh, kind of an open area here to kind of like a lounge area here, a bathroom, a computer alcove. And then if we exit, exit, enter into here, we have where the escape pods are. And there will be a bunch of machinery and stuff for the escape pods located in here. Batteries, love batteries. This will be a Jeffrey's tube. This will all be walled off and into a Jeffrey's tube. This will be uh, for like sensors and other thing, majiggies, uh, SIF uh, sensor nodes. And again, I did mention what what uh, sensor nodes are. I think this is a shield reinforcement node. This is a smaller thing. It's kind of roundish sort of a thing. And what happens when the shields start to take damage? 
it kicks in and reinforces or stabilizes the shields. Now on the old Enterprise, this big this area through here is just you know, it's all uh, well, what would you call it? Uh, empty, and we're gonna fill it with stuff and shit because why not? Oh, uh, anyways, more batteries and everything else. We come up through here, and I went ahead and made a connection between these two rooms here. Uh, debating whether I want to do this or not. Because, eh. Wouldn't be on this side, it'd be on this side, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be on this side. So, yeah, something like that. Um, over there is the medical complex. We come around here, and this is the security complex. And I think this is the best one that remnant shows. When you see in uh, Star Trek uh, a couple of the episodes where you see them using the security complex, this room here kind of reminds me of that, what you see on the show. Obviously, it's not a close match, but it is, you know, somewhat reminiscent of it. So that's my argument. I'm sticking to it. And we got a door uh, just right here, of course, leads up to, to deck seven. So yay. Ooh, I wanted to do something real quick here. While I'm thinking about it. Just go over here and fix this. That's two down. Got one more to go. Anywho, um, mm, yeah, yep, okay. We pretty much covered all that. Let's go out here real quick. We have here our emergency supply and survival lockers. There's quite a few of them along this deck here because why not? It's all looking pretty good. Uh, this is auxiliary trunk connections, interior exchange, hull spine conduits. All of this interconnects, and all this stuff here is interconnected. This is the main trunk lean from the forward part of the ship, and there'll be a transfer point up here where everything's connected. It, basically, a connection point. And it's all up through here, as you can see it up above us, and then it connects into the main hall, the main primary hall. And then as we come along here on this side, we also have it over here. Now, it's currently not connected, so the piston or the ram has been pulled back. I'm going to rework this area so it's uh, more newer looking, but uh, if we were connected to the secondary hall, this would be rammed forward, and the connections would be made right here and directly into the impulse in, into the impulse bay on the primary hall. So come back through here, you can see that this deck here hasn't even really seen much of any work at all. I do have a, a basic transporter room. This will probably get uh, modernized to be more like the current transporter rooms for the Enterprise D instead of the Enterprise E and everything. Now I've done now I've done quite a bit of work on the secondary hall uh, since the updates. And those updates were mainly for to keep him heller up to speed on what was going on because I was making so many changes so quickly while I was working through the hull and she was away and wanted to keep apprised of what was going on. So this is more of an actual episode of what's going on here. Here is another connection or trunk line connection to the to the main hall. This will also be updated to the newer system. And you can see how it all feeds in and comes back and then into this system, this area here. And this will uh, probably go along through here, along the hull, and then connect to the spine at some point. Anyways, this is part of the secondary hull's, uh, I guess you would call it hangar 2. But uh, anyways, the hangar, of course, the hangar here, it's still a work in progress. The roofing hasn't been done yet. A lot of the details haven't been added in here, so it's just sort of generic. This lift here comes down into a parking bay, and again, the two sides are different. So if this was mirrored, it would be in a, it would not work. It has its own, as you can see down there, its own separated uh, section through here. And a lot of that is like that with the secondary hall. Uh, things aren't the same through the neck as they are. You know, you just can't mirror the neck. They have differences between the sides, port and starboard. Anyways. So we have a large area in here for storage and whatnot, uh, work bees and thingamajiggies like that. Then we have a loader, of course. And that will come in later on to be sort of important. And then if we have another area down here for more storage. And I don't know yet, can I put a turbo lift? Yeah, I'm gonna, as, as a note, I'm gonna put a cargo loader right here as well, actually right here so it matches that one. So this will be a cargo. Actually, no. No, that's just a standard turbo lift door. So yeah, I'm gonna match it to this one down here. 
So come back here. So what will happen is this will be a uh, loader as well. So this area here, when there's cargo, it needs to go into the turbo lift system and be distributed around the ship. It can be. Because I don't, again, same thing with this one. Because I don't have a direct lift that goes down this down through here like we do on the old, the Ed Wifer plans. Um, we had to come up with a different way, so we decided to use the actual turbo lift system itself as sort of a pneumatic uh, cargo shipping system. So when they come down here, they offload cargo like say torpedoes, and they can put the torpedoes in here, or they can do it up there now. They would feed down through the turbo lift, as you see there. It would come forward, and then down into the turbo lift system here. I move this turbo lift again back so that it comes down through here and then it can offload into the one of the two magazines, this magazine here, which again feeds the entire primary torpedo loader and into the torpedo maintenance area and or storage area. And then it also has its own loader into the torpedo launcher. And then if you look down through here, there's a hatch here that goes into auxiliary or additional torpedo storage. So there's going to be quite a bit of torpedoes because if you look down in the old D, just that little teeny section right there, that was all the torpedo storage they had. And that basically accounts for this area here, which is now all dedicated to the, to the torpedo launcher itself. As we come down through here, I left this area open because I don't really, I have no way of connecting down to it. And it's, uh, unless I want to shorten the tank and make this up an extra big room, I, I, I no. I just figured I'd go ahead and leave this as a multi-story function. We could put something here, like a, maybe a big shield or, or sensor or something. I don't know. We'll, and we'll figure something out for it. And all of this is for engineering stuff through here, uh, related to the deuterium tanks, because you have to have deuterium processing, refining, pumps, loaders, unloaders, movers, haulers, uh, all sorts of neat stuff. A lot of ideas down here in the in the and up here uh, from the D will get implemented into the to this version of the ship as well even though this is based off the Ed Wifi plans this one isn't now here's something to <laughs> I gotta laugh about um, let's come up here these are batteries okay these are batteries and these are gases of some kind now I, I am not a fan of, of having batteries and gases on side of where there are windows because when you see windows, that means somebody should be either be living there or should have a function for humans, not some storage facility. And again, if I was, say, an industrious Klingon, all I would have to do is look through the window and say, oh, hey, look, gases. Hit it, hit it with a phaser. Torpedo shot here. This is basically a big-ass bullseye right here. And again, over here, oh, batteries. Bullseye. So yeah, I'm not a fan of putting batteries or gases next to the hull. That being said, on the Ed White fire plans, and excuse me, this they are whatever they are, and on the Sturbuck plans, these are crew quarters or you know engineering crew quarters or contingent crew crew quarters. I want to keep these as such because to me that makes more sense than having batteries along the hull. That makes no sense at, at all. Now, what I've done is I've raised this so this is a two-story area, and if we need to, we can actually open it up to the to this wall here and go up, and then I can put a bunch of emergency lockers along the this section up through here if we need it. So we have a lot more room here that we can use for something. And I also uh, we can extend this room here as well. And this room here I already extended and set it up. But if we need be, we can get rid of this Jeffrey's tube right here and just make this one big room and get rid of all of this, and then all this stuff that's here could be fit into here or like you could have batteries in this room here and your gases and stuff in this room here then all the stuff that's in the center of the ship uh, looks like they're cobble generators because you have coal and water so this must be the cobble generator uh, the cobble generator can go in whoops darn it come on let me fly ah oh, that's irritating so the cobble generator and stuff can go in here if we want it or in here and then you know up right above the the impulse engine bay here that M's been working on. So yeah, the cobble generator can be extended all the way up through here. And even up into here for whatever, you know, we want to put up in there. Anyways, that's my logic and I'm sticking to it. Um, I really don't think anything related to ship systems, vital ship systems, should be anywhere near a window. Uh, like I said, it just, and if you look here, there's a battery right next to a window. Why? This is the D, this is the old D. 
that is something we will not do. <laughs> I can I can tell you straight up that will not be done here. <laughs> there will be no batteries next to windows. <laughs> I just can't do it, folks. I just can't do it. Anyways, as I mentioned, I think maybe in one of the update videos, uh, I did go ahead and adopt the the long corridor here as opposed to the straight across corridor because again, logic being if they took a torpedo hit in this airlock, all these walls are reinforced because of the torpedo storage and torpedo room. So if this airlock took a hit on this side, it's not going to blow out and depressurize the whole deck. There'll be like a little another adjacent like airlock or something like right here, but I haven't decided how to implement that yet. So, but yeah, this is all heavily armored walls. It's my logic and I'm sticking to it. I did also add in gangways to the ship so that uh, you can go from deck 1 all the way down to deck 30 now via gangways. And they're... I, I, darn it, I know I did this already. Gosh darn it. Like, the stuff I've done I have to go back and redo because it's it's been undone. It's just really frustrating. I don't know how why this is happening, but I've had to redo this. I'm uh, Literally, this one spot, I've had to do it like two times now. Um, in this section of the ship, in this side of the ship. So I'm getting kind of frustrated about having to go back through and redo a lot of this stuff. So all of this was done. I went through and I did all of this. Now i got to come back and do it again. Just it's, 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 it's ticking me off. Anyways, come down through here. And come out here. Now, this, could, this is the main airlock deck, so we'd have to trans transition aft. I did put emergency lockers up in here because I made this room bigger in order to keep it uniform. Um, I couldn't move it all the way to this corridor because then it would be really odd looking. I couldn't turn this into a catwalk because it doesn't have any overhang so it'd just be like a you know a room with a lip like a, uh, a loft and I, I don't know I'm a big fan of lofts so the way I figured it is turn it into emergency lockers it makes it a lot better use for that. Again crew quarters through here these are not done yet because I wasn't sure if I wanted to make this room here a lounge or conference room and I'm not sure exactly what to do with that room yet. I think it's a machinery room but I'm not sure. Uh, all this probably through here is subject to change. Again if you look up here this is why this is like this down here. This can all be changed so that we gain this little quarter, this little corner back. In fact uh, probably do that I because I, I can alter this right here and make it a little bit more like con, like rounded same thing with this. I can just kind of clear that off a little bit and then it'll work a lot better. I did go ahead and route in as made plans as if this is going to be an actual thing. Again, this may not be, so this might all ch be subject to change. Let's go back up here real quick. Uh, anyways, from this point we transition down using the the gangway there. Now, one thing to keep note about this gangway is I'm a fan of symmetry, but in this case, you know, um, it can't be done because I want to keep a wall between the stairs. So you see two wide and then you have a space wall and then two wide. That means it's going to be longer on this side to the port than it is starboard. So there's one extra block length on this side. And because our the center of the ship is right here. And I like I said, I want to make sure that there's a difference between the walls here. So that means when you come off of this one, you're actually no longer you're no longer in the center of the ship here because the center of the ship is right here and right here. So this means it's a little bit longer on this side and it's okay because there's mainly Jeffrey's tubes here and over here so we have wiggle room to do that. It's something you'll never notice once it's all together. that will be completely unnoticed to, to, to people. I'm just pointing it out because somebody will notice and I'll have to explain it later on and I figure, eh, do it right now. Explain it right now. Get it out of here. Anyways, here are the deuterium tank, one of the big ones. And this can be broken into cells. Uh, either, you know, these rooms can, this can be isolated deuterium tank, this can be an isolated deuterium tank, this can be an isolated deuterium tank, so forth. And, uh, or, if we prefer, these can be all isolated and then ribbed off. So, like, you have a, a section there, a section there, a section there, like bulkheads on, a, on an oil ship, or tanks on an oil ship, how they have them all sectioned off and things like that. It's kind of the way they did it on the old D, but, um, and I like that, but, it sort of uses up a lot of volume and space and stuff so all I did is I put a like a grate right here to denote that yeah we can separate the tanks here if we want and the tanks either can stay one big open tank or they can be broken into smaller tanks 
for all intents and purposes, I think just having one big open tank is fine because all the pumps and stuff will be, there'll be multiple pumps that come down, like one will be here and then there'll be another one up in here. And, um, yeah, it might be something too. We could actually separate these into individual tanks themselves. That would probably work a lot more reasonable. So, yeah, so each, you know, like deuterium tank A, B, C, D. So if one takes a hit, it doesn't lose all the deuterium because these are big gas tanks. I did go ahead and adopt the window idea that blue, blue uh, phobes did, but if you're actually in a turbo lift, you're never going to see this except so it's just here for player benefit, and why not? Let's go ahead and buzz on out of here real quick, and uh, yeah, we'll just go ahead down here. This is deck. Uh, let's make sure I'm right here, deck 29, and we'll run along here real quick. I'm uh, deck 29. This is all engineering stuff. And the Steinbach plants, there's a core that runs along through here with little teeny rooms on this side. Now, when I say teeny, that's this would be the corridor wall, and this would be the room itself. Well, that's impractical. Impractical is all hell. So what I did is I extended the rooms out so that they're actually full-size rooms that can be used. They could be quarters, because if we wanted to, we can put a window here, you know, do whatever. And... Uh, so these can be quarters, they can be offices, they can be machinery rooms, battery rooms. Well, again, no batteries along the hall. Bad idea, especially if windows are going to go there. And I do know that this ring along here does have windows in it. So yeah, it, I, these rooms had to be functional, and that's why it's it's a little bit they're a little bit larger. It means I lost a little volume in the deuterium tank, but that's nothing we can't live with. So you know, it's okay for the deuterium tank to be a little bit smaller in this area. And it comes back through here. Now this turbo lift, you'll note there is no connection to it. The connection for this turbo lift is actually two decks down, and then it branches forward again. So, yeah, it threw me for a loop too when I started looking into that. Again, huge area back in here for all sorts of engineering stuff: deuterium pumps, additional tank storage, gases. You know, those emergency gases could be stored down through here. I will roof this. This will all be covered up at some point. It'll either be layered off or it'll be open like this or it'll be flat and then this area will just be dead space or used for machinery or it'll be all right along the top here and then so forth it'll or, you know we'll figure something out. it'll look good and stuff it'll look sweet it'll look so epic it'll be awesome it'll be, you'll be loving it it'll be the best but anyways uh, that's pretty much it I do appreciate you taking time to watch again this is the mindtrek.net game server if you'd hit that like button for me I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd like to subscribe uh, please do so uh, please also like us on our Facebook page, and if you'd like to donate to the server, there's a link in the description below. Anyways, thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye-bye.